Hey, good morning. This is Tom, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show. And I thought I was playing just a little upbeat music for you to uh, get things started today. Had a long weekend. Wow. Just some little personal information before I get started. Actually, it's an excuse why I haven't done a show. Is uh, Thanksgiving was our day to have people over to our house. So that pretty well wiped out Thanksgiving. And the day after, the day after was used for recovering. And so I didn't get too much done there except visit with my relatives. Saturday, um, my brother died a couple weeks ago. So Saturday was the funeral. So we had the funeral on Saturday, which was in Orlando, which is a four hour round trip for us. And last month, my sister died. So out of the seven siblings, there's two only two of us left. So it's time to get out of the depression and gloominess and get happy again. So we're happy that we have this antenna that was sent to me by WDX2, 2, not T. I think I said T three times in the, when I showed you this before. Radio. And he is on eBay under this name. And you can get this antenna from him that he puts together. It's a kit of parts that he rounds up. And uh, he sells these very inexpensive. And I had that page up and now I forgot what he sells them for. And the answer is... <clears throat> To only $22. So, granted, you might be able to buy this stuff brand new for a little less. But you have to go find it. And he's cut the stuff for you. He's cut the antennas. He's given you, he come, this comes with, um, and let me get back to my camera so I can see what you're looking at. It comes with this instruction sheet. And it tells you what's included, how you use it, how you put it together, because there is a little bit of assembly. And uh, I think he's done a pretty good job here. And we're going to review this antenna. First, we're going to show you today what comes in a package. Again, this is $22, free shipping. He's on eBay. He's been selling these for quite a while. So. I'm going to open this up, remove this, and you also get a uh, Ziploc, big Ziploc bag out of it. Of course, that's if you don't tear it too bad, like I'm going to do probably because I'm in a hurry. And we'll unzip that. And of course, the staples are still there. So there we go, that came loose, and that came loose. So we're going to dump out the contents here, and then we're going to look at, he includes in his instructions a packing list. So we're going to look at this packing list. I'm going to zoom in, whoa, so you can see everything that's here. And like I say, this is a basic, what I call a long wire antenna. It's just a long piece of wire um, brought into your house. Okay, now this is appropriate use of, oh, this is something about the rope. Oh, it's a little sheet about the rope that's included, how to tie it and all that stuff. I don't know if he ships this with every kit or not, but there it is. Okay, now according to, I'm going to go right down the list of contents. We have 50 feet of bare wire. Okay, let me move things around a little bit here. Let's see, do I have that zoomed in? Yeah, I got it zoomed in good enough. Oh, we got lots of pieces here. Like I say, if you had to go out and find these things and buy them brand new, it probably cost you more than $22, I'm guessing. But I, you know, the, the, this item right here, copper wire is gone out of sight. Ooh, and you get 50 feet of this bare copper wire. 
I'm thinking it's, um, it doesn't say, I'm thinking it's a number 18 gauge wire. I'm guessing at that. And nice, bright, shiny copper wire. So that's first thing that's on the list. It's 50 feet, which is more than adequate. You can, if you can't run a 50 foot run, you can cut this down. And the idea is you want it as long as possible to get the lower part of the shortwave band. The longer the wire, this type of antenna, the better you will get the reception on lower frequencies. So 50 feet is pretty an ideal length without being too long. Um, up to 100 feet would be even better. So, so that's what that's all about. The next is 25 feet of insulated wire. This is insulated wire. I think it's stranded. And let's see what it says on here, if I can read it. I was trying to see if it had a number. 18. This is also 18 gauge. So this is your lead-in wire. You attach this to the antenna on one end and then bring this into your house. Okay. Now, let me stop right there for a minute. I have pointed out many times that using this kind of wire to bring in an antenna into your house, if you have a lot of RF noise from computers, from monitors, from routers, this is probably not going to work. I don't know what additional cost it would be for him to include 25 feet of shielded wire. That's what you want, shielded wire. This will work fine, number one, if you don't have any RF in your house, which is not likely. Number two, if you're going to use this antenna for a field antenna that you go out in a park or in the woods someplace and you throw this antenna up in the trees, that's this will work fine because you don't have that extra RF noise environment, or at least hopefully you don't. And that's why a lot of times when I'm testing a portable shortwave radio, I will go to a park away from uh, that RF noise of my workshop or my office to show how well the radio works on its own with its own built in antenna. So this is one thing I would suggest to him to add an option at a higher price because the coax cable is, is going to cost considerably more. But, and, I, and I will contact him, him and ask him, um, you know, what would be the additional cost to have this replaced by coax so that people that want to bring the long wire antenna into their house they will have that shielded lead in. So anyway, so that's that. The other thing that's included is the insulators. There is, these are called dog bone insulators. They've been around for a hundred years. Uh, they're probably made out of, well, I'm sure they're made out of different material than they used to be made out of. I've got some real old insulators and they're just turning to dust powder. Um, they're just <laughs> falling apart. Um, these are some kind of plastic, I think. So you get two of those. Um, these are used to, you attach your antenna to one side and you attach the rope to the other side so it insulates the antenna from whatever you're tying the rope to. Most of this is very basic, but I'm gonna go over it anyway. So you get two of those, that's all you need is two. And then the next thing you get is, you get the, the rope, he calls it twine, you get the rope. This is to go on one side of this, the antenna on the other side of this, and this you tie to a pole or a tree or whatever to string your antenna. So you get two of those and it doesn't say the length. I think, well, yeah, I don't have a pair of dikes right here to see how long this is. I'm guessing 
five, six feet. And of course, you can substitute your own if you need longer. And I usually use um, a nylon similar to this, but it's much, much smaller um, rope. Much, much smaller. It's about the stuff I use is about the thickness of this lead in. I use that. Um, it's very inexpensive. And uh, I usually have to use about mm, 15, 20 feet on each end to get antennas strung up in my trees. Okay, so you get two of those. Next thing you get is dun, 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 you get shrink wrap tubing, three pieces of shrink wrap tubing. Again, for use that are you of those. <laughs> but it's easier for me to say. For those of you that are not familiar with shrink wrap tubing, is instead of using tape to cover up a connection like it when you're connecting this end to the copper wire, you can uh, use shrink wrap tubing or you can use tape. Now, probably if you're, depending on how you hook it up, if you're using, if you're connecting this end to the antenna, you would solder it on and then you would use tape. And it gives you a full roll of commercial electric tape. Full roll, not just a little piece. Okay, what else did you give me? Now, the, um, so you got that, you got that, you got that, you got this. Oh, and here are the two terminals that he gives you. Uh, this is the old style, and I'll see if I can get it closer. The old style terminal that, like my Radio Shack DX160 antenna connections are screws, and it slides underneath the screw and you tighten it down. That's how you connect it, the antenna to the radio, and then you would put this white lead in into solder it into the back of this connector. The other way is an alligator clip. Uh, again, you tie this white wire to the alligator clip, and then you can clip this to, oh boy, it's a stiff one. You can clip this to your built-in telescopic antenna on your radio. Okay. And in his ad, he says, if you need something a little different, you know, longer wire, or you need some of this stuff pre-assembled, he can do that for you, and then he'll tell you what the price is. So that's what you get in the kit. Um, did I miss anything? Nope, I think I got everything. So what we'll be doing in the next day or two, especially if I can get some help, is we'll be stringing up this antenna, and we'll do some reception testing. Now, luckily, the last antenna I put up, which was an in-fed antenna, the gentleman that sent me that antenna sent me some pulleys so I don't have to climb up in the roof to let that one down. I can let that one down, disconnect it from uh, the, the rope on the pulley, and then add this or replace it with this. So I should be able to get this up pretty easy by myself. So that's it. This again is from um, WDX two radio on eBay sells for let me go back to the eBay page for twenty two dollars uh, you buy it now you don't have to bid on it that's the price free shipping and uh, we're gonna see how well it works so that's it um, I've got some new gadgets devices I'll call them coming uh, they should get here this week I'm, I'm kind of uh, getting a little bit away from radio and in, in, in into some miscellaneous electronics. Um, I just I'll tell you ahead of time the I got one of those funky little testers from China. I, they just amaze me what they can do, but they can test all kinds of components. Now I don't really need one, but I got it for doing a review. There's many other reviews on that little device on YouTube. So again, I'm late to this party, but what the heck? I want to play with it. It's a gadget I wanted to play with. 
I probably never use it. At, yeah, I might me use it on occasion because I'm no longer into repairing radios. I used to do that many years ago, and I'm just not into it. I, I just can't find time. Well, that's not a good excuse. Uh, that, I'm just going to have to make time because I've got a number of radios that have minor problems or they need some minor modifications. For instance, my Radio Shack DX394, there are several mods for that. They're pretty simple and I need to do them. So that's that's one thing I, I in the near future I'm going to tackle is I'm going to do the tuning mod on the DX394, Radio Shack's DX394 that turns off muting while tuning and see what the side effects are because there are some side effects I'm, I understand. So I'm going to be doing that in the very near future. So if you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. I hope you had a great holiday. The weather down here in Florida has been beautiful. I have no excuse for not getting things done in my workshop and outside. Bye-bye.